Plus, cooking with the naked chef, Jamie Oliver. Tonight, first your local news. Word of another possible delay and action tonight by Timothy McVeigh. A call for blood to help a critically wounded HPD officer. A school says a contractor failed to deliver dozens of toss tests. An up-close report on obesity and why losing weight could save your life. Plus a ceremony to get rid of a ghost. We'll go inside the alehouse next. of a bald eagle bring it grace and majesty, but also danger. So people working in Wyoming built special platforms, helping eagles land unharmed. Do people really help a threatened species soar to new heights? People do. Now, 11 News at 10. Good evening, I'm Lisa Ferranda. And I'm Greg Hirsch. Thanks for joining us. Tonight, Timothy McVeigh's attorneys say he has authorized them to draft a request to block his execution, but has decided not yet whether to file it. And this only hours after CBS News reported exclusive information that could lead to another execution delay. A former FBI agent is claiming that information he developed while working the Oklahoma City bombing was given to the defense. McVeigh's attorneys believe that as well, even though the FBI says it is not true, and that the roughly 4,000 documents withheld by the FBI have now been turned over. The stunning revelation about that potential evidence is what caused the first delay. The main problem is that, you know, who does the FBI answer to? When somebody screws up in the FBI, when the FBI screws up, you know, who do they answer to? Nobody. One of McVeigh's attorneys, Rob Nye, says if Ojeda's claims are true, then at the very least, his client's date with death should be postponed again until federal foul-ups can be sorted out. If those statements are accurate, the verdict has no integrity, and we cannot possibly proceed with an execution until we know. 168 men, women, and children died in the blast at the Murrah Federal Building. For their families and the survivors, news of another delay is heartbreaking. McVeigh is scheduled to die in just under two weeks, June 11th. Last week, U.S. Attorney General John Athcross said that the execution would not be postponed again. A call for help tonight for a Houston police officer wounded in the line of duty. 34-year-old Enrique Duarte Tour is in serious condition at Ben Taub and needs more blood. He has a rare type, AB positive. You can donate the blood at the blood center at 1400 La Concha every night until 7. His partner, 32-year-old Alberto Vazquez, was killed as they both tried to arrest a drug suspect a week ago today. This morning, the man accused of the shootings, though, was in court. 19-year-old Alex Adams is charged with capital murder, meaning if he is found guilty, he could be sentenced to die. Adams is in a wheelchair because he was shot by an officer. The other lawman killed last week was 35-year-old Harris County Deputy Joseph Dennis. Today, HVD's Mounted Patrol held a barbecue fundraiser to help the families of all three officers. And hundreds of people showed up to buy the food around lunchtime. Those lines lasted well into the evening. They raised more than $32,000. If you couldn't make it by there, you can still get involved by making a donation to the 100 Club Survivors Fund. That address is 1233 West Loop South, Suite 1250 in Houston. The zip code 77027. It has been a week now since a doctor was arrested by Houston police who say they're trying to keep a codeine crisis from killing kids here. But 11 News reporter Jeff McShann says people who depend on his care want his office on Southmore to stay open. Some community leaders and residents of Houston's Third Ward are now worried about medical care after Dr. Richard Mosby was arrested and charged with prescribing medicine. Investigators say that recipients wound up selling on the streets to kids and adults. HPD says drugs like codeine that can kill. He's always showed a caring spirit. Mosby is currently out on bond and some in his community are rallying around him. So Dr. Mosby is the only doctor some people can count on. A lot of us didn't have money to see other doctors, and Dr. Mosby took us in whenever we didn't have nothing. If we want to investigate somebody, we need to find out why these people who come here with no medical uh, insurance don't get the proper support from the state of Texas or the county. That's what we, we need to go ask the county commissioners and the judge and the mayor of Houston and the rest of them who are more concerned about a football stadium. That's what we need to do. Dr. Robert Gilmore is president of Real Urban Ministry. The fact is we don't have very many African-American doctors 
We want to provide health care openly without worrying about insurance or HMO, which we already know in America and in the state of Texas is a joke. He's in the heart of the community. He has the heart for the community. Reverend John Gibbs says Mosby took his practice to churches. See, this is a god fearing man. He's a family man. Uh, and, I, and I don't think he would do anything to hurt his wife, to hurt his family, to hurt the, the livelihood of, uh, of his employees. Uh, and he's been in the third world community for many, many years. Certainly well liked by many. As we mentioned, Dr. Richard Mosby is out on $5,000 bond. He was back at his clinic today. Greg, his court date has yet to be determined. Back to All right, we'll watch to see what happens. Jeff, thanks. A Galveston County teacher was convicted today of abusing her 10-year-old son. Martina Clemens was arrested last year and accused of torturing the boy over a three-year period. Her boyfriend, James Cooper, was also charged, and the boy, the child, is now in foster care. Also in Galveston, a school's exemplary status could be in jeopardy because of missing TOS tests there. 11 News reporter Jeremy Diesel says there are more questions than answers at Weiss Middle School. To an 8th grader, this is the ultimate test, TOS, specifically the writing sample question that our students take a great deal of pride in their work. Um, this particular school has been exemplary for two years in a row. These kids work extremely hard. And it's labor that may have been wasted here. Not because students didn't try or do well, but because the tests are missing. 63 of them. That's the real mystery that we can't solve. Doesn't that seem fishy? It seems strange. I mean, we can't figure it out. District Evaluation Director Dr. Richard Tullis doesn't think the problem happened at the school level. All the paperwork is in order. 232 tests taken, 232 tests shipped to Austin for scoring, but only 169 scores came back. The district, the Texas Education Agency, and the scoring contractor involved are all trying to figure out what's happened. TEA officials calling the missing tests highly unusual. The district says it thinks Weiss Middle School would have ended up being an exemplary school for the third year in a row with or without these missing writing tests. But the district says there's no way to know for sure. That's why they've petitioned the TEA to keep writing out of the mix. Many of these students are, are classified as gifted and talented. It would be in no way in anyone's interest to preclude these students' scores. How big does a dog have to be to eat 63 kids' homework? In Galveston, Jeremy Diesel, 11 News. Now, those tests you saw are copies of the written sections the school is allowed to make, but there are no copies of the multiple choice sections. A fiery accident on Highway 59 near Williams Trace killed one person and closed all outbound lanes for more than five hours. An 18-wheeler and five other vehicles were involved in the collision. Five people were taken to the hospital for treatment. Venezuela is moving to ban the sale of Ford Explorers there. That country's Consumer Protection Agency says design flaws have caused 50 rollover accidents since last August. 37 people died in those wrecks. No response from Ford tonight. But in the past, the company has insisted its Explorers are safe. The clock is ticking for people here with unpaid traffic tickets. City Marshals plan to round up delinquent ticket holders starting this Saturday. So that gives you a couple more days to head downtown to Houston's Municipal Courthouse and pay your fine to potentially avoid a trip to jail. A frequent flyer bonus is being offered by Continental Airlines for people who take short hops from Ellington Field to Bush Intercontinental Airport to catch their flights out of town. The trip between the two takes about 15 minutes and you get 500 frequent flyer miles each way, a thousand total. There's no charge if you're connecting on Continental and parking, by the way, is free right in front of the Continental Express Terminal. The governor of California may be making a power play, but President Bush isn't responding. The governor wants price caps put on power producers, but Mr. Bush says that's not the solution to the state's energy crisis. Price caps may sound appealing, but their result will ultimately be more serious shortages and therefore even higher prices. With rolling blackouts a threat every day, Governor Gray Davis says California is legally entitled to some relief and he may actually go to court to get it. Guilty verdicts tonight in the bombings of U.S. embassies in Africa that killed 224 people and injured thousands. The men, including one who's from Arlington, Texas, are all followers of suspected international terrorist Osama bin Laden. Two could get the death penalty. Six other defendants are still awaiting trial for the 1998 bombings in Kenya and Tanzania. Investigators are still trying to hunt down more than a dozen other suspects, including Osama bin Laden.
A horrifying sight as a helicopter hits a bridge and breaks in two. Doctors say millions of Americans should be worried about their weight, but watching what you eat just might not be enough. And the ale house is closing. But first they're trying to send some spirits away for good. In the spirit of Texas, with Greg Hurst and Lisa Veranda, you're watching 11 News at 10. A tragic overseas accident has claimed the lives of three South Korean soldiers. Images of the awful accident were caught on tape. The chopper was approaching a bridge where it was trying to install something on the central tower, but somehow the rotors hit some wires and the helicopter snapped in two on impact. One half fell on the bridge, the other into the river below. America is the most obese nation in the world. More than a third of all adults and one in five children are dangerously overweight. In tonight's 11 Up Close report, Jeremy Rogowski looks at what could be life-saving solutions. We are creatures of comfort. The waistlines and midsections tell the story. One of self-indulgence and complacency, experts say, with no self-control. We are in the middle of an epidemic of obesity, and it's a very frightening thing to see happen. That's why Dr. William Klish has devoted much of his research career to kids. All my life I've been overweight. Like Tamar Chalakian, 14 years old and obese. She's in a program called The Way of Life. I've gone on diets before, it's never been this successful. More than just a diet, more than machines measuring fat and body mass, it's about one's mindset, modifying behavior before the odds become overwhelming. If a child is obese at, uh, at age six, they have about a 25% chance of being obese as an adult. Uh, if they're obese at age 12, they have a 75% chance of being obese as an adult. You eat what you like and lose weight. When the world of quick fix, so-called weight loss wonders, becomes all-encompassing. Lose two inches in just 10 days. Weight loss tablets. Are... A bombardment of miracle pills and promises that often result in a roller coaster ride of frustration, while the risk of obesity-related disease greatens. Diabetes, sleep apnea, cancer. The most extreme of weight loss measures is bariatric surgery, a majorly invasive operation. Doctors actually shrink your stomach from the size of a small watermelon down to the size of an egg. If anything's going to help me, this is going to help me. Meet Rodney Waters, before at 430 pounds, after surgery down to 280. The Houston firefighter knew without a major lifestyle change, life itself was in jeopardy. I wasn't going to make it. I wasn't going to. I'm in the window to, to have a heart attack now if I didn't do something about it. For Waters, bariatric surgery was the only answer. This has saved my life. I mean, absolutely saved my life. Something was horribly, horribly wrong. For Kim Burton, weight loss surgery almost cost her life. She carried 235 pounds on her five foot, five inch frame for years. I had been on every diet, every advertised diet on television you've seen. But having no success, Burton finally signed up for surgery. That was last March. And then I spent 28 days in the hospital with basically blood poisoning. I had a serious infection of my peritoneal lining of my whole cavity of my body. But even with that harrowing experience, a year later and 100 pounds lighter, Burton swears by it. I would do it tomorrow. But bariatric surgery is not for everyone. Not for the mildly overweight, not for someone without obesity-related health problems, and certainly not, says Dr. Beryl Harburg, for cosmetic reasons. Unless a person meets the guidelines set up by the National Institutes of Health, I won't operate on them. I don't care how much they're willing to pay. Paying the price of obesity comes in all forms, from $100 billion in health care costs a year to embarrassment and low self-esteem. I, I want to be healthy, you know, and live a full life. In the middle of an epidemic, in search of a solution. Jeremy Rogalski, 11 Up Close. Now, by some calculations, obesity is determined by your body mass index or your BMI. Now, if you want to calculate yours, just go to our website, click on News, 
and then on obesity surgery, and you'll find the bariatric surgeon address for the formula based on height and weight. More than a dozen people were hurt in last night's tornado that hit Ellicott, Colorado. One home was lifted into the air, dropped 10 feet from its foundation. Mobile homes were smashed to bits, barns were flattened, and the high school was severely damaged. But the wind didn't destroy, got pelted pretty good by hail. Just before the twister struck came six inches of hail. Oof. Doc is here now with a look at the weather in our area. A bit calmer, sunnier, warm, and muggy. Doc? Well, Lisa, it's interesting to note that Tornado Watch is in effect for that same area that got hit by the tornado last night. But here locally, it's just warm and muggy. Temperature's just below 80 degrees. Look at the dew point, 73. For you boaters, the winds are southeast 15, gusting in the afternoon, so the seas are running around four or five feet. Last night at this time, we were watching severe weather develop in the panhandle. This is the area of weather you can see right up in the upper left-hand corner of your screen there. That is a tornado watch box last night, and that's where the tornado occurred. And as we put the radar into motion, watch the thunderstorms develop here in West Texas, and then move to the east-northeast up into Oklahoma, missing us here in southeast Texas. But tonight, again, we've got tornado watches for that same area, and more thunderstorms have formed, and they should move off to the northeast. And I don't believe these thunderstorms to the south will move into uh, southeast Texas. And the reason for all of this is that storm system that you see moving in there to the west, right on the left-hand side of your screen, and it's parked in northeast uh, New Mexico, and it is on the move. Uh, south of that front, temperatures in the 90s today. We made it at 90 degrees, and that's 2 degrees, 3 degrees above normal for this time of the year. Bigger picture shows that storm system one more time, moving out of Arizona and on into the northeast corner of New Mexico, and it's quite cool in the north and part of the country. 60s and 70s are our high temperature this afternoon. And south of that front, you can see there is in the 90s. And of course, down in Mexico, a little warmer at Acapulco today because that big hurricane is moving to the west. Let's put it into motion, and you can see the eye of the storm. At one time, the winds were up to 145 miles an hour. They're down to about 125 now, and it is moving on to the west. So it looks like that uh, they, the west of the coastal areas down there will not have a problem. Here locally, that storm system should move on over into Oklahoma, and that will give us a problem, uh, could give us some thunderstorms on Thursday and Friday. 70 in the morning, 90 in the afternoon, slight chance of an afternoon or evening thunderstorm, a much better chance of having thunderstorms here on Thursday and Friday. Let's call it a 50% as that storm system in New Mexico moves eastward. We'll be watching. Thanks, Doc. Over $2,000 in settled accounts this month thanks to work done by the 11 News Defenders. Here's consumer reporter Eileen Faxis with The Case is Closed. They're a little bit country. Listen to the music. But this is rock and roll traffic. If I can get over without getting killed. <laughs> John and Linda Sieber haven't driven by the Astrodome in years, but according to the city of Houston, they parked here illegally in a car they haven't owned since 1999. And I just can't understand why they can't get this solved. Despite their calls, the tickets kept coming until we called the city that helps us clear the Sieber's record so they can drive in peace. No. The thieves were also getting bills for diamond earrings they didn't have. Went and took the earrings back. But in a complicated twist, Diamond Express kept the money and the earrings, leaving their check clearinghouse holding the bill. Telecheck was pursuing the themes until the defenders proved they didn't have the earrings, putting Diamond Express in the hot seat and the themes sitting pretty. The call she got, and he got, and she got, all seemed to come from their kids' schools. we like to know if you like to have a computer. Countless parents bought the pitch, spending more than $2,000 for computers and educational software. But the calls really came from Home Learning Center, a company accumulating complaints for confusing customers and selling some problematic computers. Our responsibility is to work and, and fix that computer. But sometimes people say, no, I don't want it anymore. Owner Cesar Chagoya says he's not trying to impersonate schools or sell bad computers, but complains parents are trying to break their contracts. After talking to us, Chagoya returns money to two out of our three parents who returned their computers. The other parent is suing. These stories came from consumers like you who called our hotline. That number is 713-341-6143. Open weekdays, 9 to 4. We are here to defend you. I'm Eileen Faxis, 11 News Defenders.
popular Houston watering hole is about to close its doors for good. But they may not have a ghost of a chance of getting one regular to leave. We have a ghost story tonight that's been heard all over Houston. Not a lot of parts, but tonight they're trying to get rid of ghosts said to inhabit the Ale House in the 2400 block of West Alabama. 11 News reporter Sherman Chow is there. Sherman? You were right. We are on the second floor of the Ale House, famous as a social landmark for uh, those who enjoy drink after work, but also well known, as you say, because a couple of ghosts, one named Maggie, one named the Captain, are supposed to inhabit here. And tonight, a group of folks decided to hold a seance to try and help these ghosts move on because the alehouse is going to be destroyed pretty soon. Uh, the lady sitting at the head of the table is the medium, and she's got these folks together, and they're going to try and attempt to contact these spirits. Let's take a listen in. ...to a very, very high level. And then I want us all to link up hands, and we're just going to get used to each other's energy, so we're just going to be having now, there are energy of going of skeptics, around the room. But to these folks, this is a very serious business, all part of a and ghost story, which began 20 years ago. Welcome to the Ale House. Glasses would come flying off the racks. A simple, unassuming pub. A lot of people have heard their names being called. Or is it? They were just light by themselves. Long-time employees insist there are ghosts here, and they've even snapped their photos. Ectoplasm or smoke, you decide. Our phone lines will light up, and there's nobody in the office. Or, you know, you'll have chairs arranged upstairs. You come out, and they're in different spots. Here, a picture of a light source named Maggie. The glasses would, like, come out and just break on the ground. Bartenders claim it's not a vivid imagination or a thirsty one. Because you're the only one up here. Mm -hmm. The tavern opened in 1981 and will close in just days to become a parking lot. Victim, critics say, to an evil developer. Still more psychic connections. We needed to sort of show our displeasure for what was going on, and voodoo seemed the appropriate venue for it. So some patrons decided it was time to move the ghosts. Go to the light to cross over. Rather than hanging around here in the physical world, it's time for them to actually, you know, go on to the next dimension. Some would say a very neighborly and decent thing to do to help the spirits move on because otherwise they might be displaced. The pub itself is going to be moving on just a couple of blocks down the road here and it will reopen in a few months. Lisa and Greg. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Sherman. Okay. We'll be back in a moment. Don't go away. Maybe a change of scenery and a day off will help the Astros get out of their seven-game slide in San Diego this evening. And folks, this is the way it's been going. In the first, slugger Jeff Bagwell looks at a call third strike. Craig Biggio trying to steal, and it's a quick double play. Then in the fourth, Lance Berkman watches the pitch, and Bagwell gets nailed at second. In the fifth, Richard Hidalgo looks to go deep, but once again can't quite make it happen as Mark Kotze makes an all-star play, robbing Doggy of a home run. But folks, the Astros just got one and lead San Diego one zip in the fifth. The puck was sliding across the ice in Denver for game two of the Stanley Cup Finals between the Devils and the Avalanche. New Jersey's Turner Stevenson lights the lamp in the first to break a 1-1 tie. And that was it for the scoring in the game as the defending champion Devils tied the series with Denver at one game apiece in the best of seven game series. French Open tennis continuing in Paris. First, the number five seed Pete Sampras had his work cut out for him playing against French Cedric Kaufman. Sampras was pushed to the limit as the match went five sets. Pistol Pete finally winning the final set in an 8-6 tiebreaker to advance. The third seed, Andre Agassi, looked very strong in this match with Sweden's Thomas Johansson. Andre was a giant killer in the first two sets, winning 6-2, 6-3, and then finished off Johansson 7-6.
to move on. We've been telling you that the women's field has been decimated as Venus Williams has been reduced to a spectator, but her sister Serena wins a three-setter today. She was matched up against Frances Sarah Pekowski, the sixth-seeded Williams, winning her first match in a tournament since March to move on. And the four-seed player Jennifer Capriotti looking for back-to-back -back Grand Slam titles defeated Frances Emilio Lloyd. She won the first set 6-2 and was down in the second set 5-2, but then won the final five games to beat the 81st-ranked player 6-2-7-5. Positive for the Astros. They got a run, and Kent Bottenfield has not given up one. <laughs> Thank goodness. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh -huh. Pro golfer Casey Martin has won his legal battle to ride a golf cart during PGA tournaments. The U.S. Supreme Court today ruled in his favor. Martin has a circulatory disorder that makes it painful to walk long distances, but boy, he can certainly swing that golf club. Despite the disability, some golfers believe the cart gives him an unfair advantage. DJs are not supposed to break a lot of records, but this guy was trying to crush one. And I've got the music in me. Oh yeah, this New Jersey DJ definitely had the music in him. Glenn Jones may have set a new 100-hour, 40-second world record for the longest continuous radio broadcast. The Guinness World Record people still have to certify his four-day effort. We had him on last night. He was right. going at 73 hours and he couldn't stop. The Energizer Bunny has a new competition. He needs some sleep. Right. See you later. We're back tomorrow. Bye-bye.